The British Navy was considered at the time as the most powerful in the world. The Atlantic Ocean was the scene of the most important battle of the Second World War. Deep beneath the Atlantic, in a place where no light reaches and no diver can survive, a giant sleeps. Almost five kilometers down on the seabed west of France lies a steel tomb, so massive it bends the currents around it like an undersea mountain. The battleship Bismarck, the pride of Hitler's navy in World War II, was a floating fortress built to outgun, outrun, and terrify anything afloat. Lost in 1941, she has rested here for more than 80 years, untouched, unbroken, and hidden in the blackness. We may be actually in the slide scar. You can, um, you can see the shape of it on the sonar on the right. Really gives you an idea how big that thing is. For decades, the world believed it knew how she died. Holy tornado. Oh my lord. But a new underwater drone has pierced the abyss and returned with images so strange they are forcing experts to rethink everything. The Bismarck did not simply fall to British guns. Bismarck's 15 cm secondary turrets were as big as the main guns on most warships. Even in her silent grave, Bismarck still seems lethal. Nor did her crew quietly destroy her themselves. But the cameras reveal hints at something far colder, more deliberate. Something so terrifying it has shaken veteran naval investigators to their core. A secret sealed in steel, waiting for someone to finally look. The alley is blown apart. Lots of wires and battle damage. Over. Can you guys continue to starboard and image this gun, which I think is S3? Over. The Bismarck lies upright in the mud 470M west of France. A ghost frozen at the bottom of the sea. Around her, the water is pitch black and ice cold, pressed under 480 atmospheres, as if an entire mountain of rock five kilometers high were bearing down on every square inch. Sunlight has never reached this place. No sound of life penetrates it, broken only by the dissing roan of shifting currents and the faint inching creak of metal warped by time. More than 2,000 sailors are sealed inside this steel coffin. To Germany it is sacred ground, a war grave protected by law. No human being could survive the pressure here. Even machines tremble. To disturb it would not only breach international law but violate the unwritten contract humanity has with its dead. And yet, the wreck exerts a pull all its own, as if the ship itself, sleeping in the dark, has been waiting for someone to come and look. This time, instead of divers or drills or anything that could scrape the wreck, they sent a robot. A next-generation drone equipped with eyes sharper than any humans and thrusters soft enough to skim across the seabed without disturbing even a grain of sand. The robot is not only the only way to survive at such depths. It's also a gesture of respect. No one on the mission wanted to break the look-but-don't-touch rule. No entering the interior. No scraping off paint. No salvaging souvenirs. Just eyes, not hands. Before launch, the team rehearsed every movement like a military operation. They obtained permissions from German authorities, studied international conventions, and prepared themselves mentally for the reality of filming a grave where thousands died. Every checklist felt less like a research plan and more like a ritual, a way of asking permission before trespassing into a tomb. The descent feels like leaving the world behind. On the monitors inside the support ship, blue gives way to green, then black. The tether unspools endlessly into the void. The drone's lights switch on, cutting narrow beams through the darkness like headlights through midnight fog. Then suddenly, a shape appears. At first, it's only a smudge, a shadow in the black. Then, something vast rises from the mud, a bow huge and silent, emerging like a sleeping giant lifting its head. Even after 80 years, parts of the Bismarck still look like they could sail tomorrow. The deck planking clings on, the superstructure outlines are unmistakable. But as the cameras close in, all gives way to unease. Steel plates dented inward as if struck by a hammer the size of a building. Others peeled outward like the lid of a tin can. Main turrets torn free. The stern lying far from the main hull, twisted and broken. This isn't the neat image of a ship sunk in battle. It's a frozen crime scene a message written in steel but missing its last lines. To understand the mystery, you have to know what kind of monster the Bismarck was. Laid down in 1936 and launched in 1939, 
She was Germany's floating fortress, a weapon meant to restore German dominance on the seas. Over 820 feet long, more than 50,000 tons, her armor was built up to 320 millimeters thick. She was meant to be untouchable. Her eight 15-inch guns could fire shells heavier than cars over staggering distances. She could move at more than 30 knots across the Atlantic, outpacing almost anything that could fight her. In 1941, she proved it. She set out with the cruiser Prince Eugene to attack Allied shipping. In the Denmark Strait, she encountered two Royal Navy giants, HMS Hood and HMS Prince of Wales. What followed was one of the most dramatic naval duels of the Second World War. The British fired first, their shells arcing across the Grey Sea. But within minutes, the Bismarck's gunners found their mark. A shell slammed into Hood's magazine, igniting a cataclysmic explosion. In seconds, Britain's proudest battlecruiser was ripped apart, taking more than 1,400 men with her. Only three survived. For Germany, it was a moment of triumph. For Britain, it was a wound so deep that the order was simple. The Bismarck must be destroyed no matter the cost. What followed was a desperate, relentless chase. Bismarck, leaking fuel and damaged, attempted to escape southward, pursued by a Royal Navy determined to avenge the hood. Battleships, cruisers, destroyers, and even aircraft carriers were drawn into the hunt. On May 26th, slow swordfish biplanes from Ark Royal attacked at dusk. Against all odds, one torpedo jammed the Bismarck's rudder, locking her into helpless circles. She could no longer steer properly. Dawn came and the British moved in closer. For more than an hour, shells and torpedoes pounded the German battleship. Inside, fires raged, compartments flooded. German sailors fought to keep the ship alive while following orders to scuttle her to prevent capture. By late morning on May 27th, the Bismarck vanished beneath the waves. The British claimed they had destroyed her. The German survivors swore they had sunk her themselves. For decades, that argument hardened into two versions of the truth. Then the cameras went down and the steel began to tell its own story. On June 1989, for the first time, Dr. Robert Ballard found the wreck of the Bismarck. What his team saw startled him. The ship was far more intact than expected, despite the ferocity of the battle that had sent her there. The armored citadel looked like a fortress, almost untouched. The bow rose from the mud like a cliff. Ballard's images confirmed that the stern had broken away, lying twisted and separated from the main hull, likely the result of the stresses as she hit the seabed. The main turrets, each weighing over a thousand tons, had torn free under their own weight during the descent and now lay scattered around the wreck. But in some ways, the wreck's condition contradicted the expectations of historians. If the Royal Navy's gunfire had utterly destroyed the Bismarck, why did her armored citadel remain so intact? Why had so much of the ship's form survived the bombardment that was supposed to have obliterated her? It looked like something more complicated, not a ship blown apart, but a ship caught in the act of being crushed by forces bigger than gunfire. Now, in 2025, the newest drone has returned with images sharper than anything seen before. And the stern of the ship tells a story that leaves even veteran engineers unsettled. Its cameras don't just show where shells struck. They reveal how the steel itself buckled under unimaginable force. Inward bends mark damage from the outside. A shell, a torpedo, or the crushing grip of seawater. Outward bends point to something from within, an explosion, a valve opening, or a compartment giving way. Side by side, some plates curve inward while others flare outward, like clashing fingerprints left at the crime scene. This isn't the scar of one clean hit. It's the footprint of an entire system breaking down at once. A silent confusion etched in steel nearly five kilometers below the surface. The scans reveal a phenomenon known as progressive flooding. This happens when water crashes into one compartment, spills into the next, and then the next until the ship's balance and strength are destroyed. In the Bismarck's case, the images suggest that as water poured in, the stern bent and twisted under massive forces until it finally tore free. Torpedoes may have started the damage, but the final break appears to have come from a deadly mix of flooding and hydrodynamic stress as the ship lost buoyancy and structural strength. 
Engineers studying the digital models even saw fracture patterns they call terminal loads, the kind of forces that appear only in the last frantic moments when a vessel is being ripped apart from the inside as much as from the outside. This flips the entire story on its head. Maybe British shells and torpedoes mortally wounded the Bismarck. Maybe German sailors opened valves and set charges to sink her first. But if progressive flooding had already begun, then her end wasn't just about one side winning. It was the ocean itself taking control. It means the Bismarck may have been doomed no matter what her crew did. It also means the old story about who gets credit or blame is far too simple. The ship didn't only lose to the British or to its own crew. It lost to physics, to the relentless weight of water and the merciless mathematics of pressure. If this deep sea investigation made you think twice about what you thought you knew, tell us in the comments which part of the Bismarck story shocked you the most. Like and subscribe for the next chapter, another case where steel, sea, and human choice collide.